Oh man, wasn't Shulk's reveal yesterday just the best newcomer intro we've had? The way they use the Monado's powers to increase his own moves or to build up others, plus the music playing, unfinished battle, and you will know our names, was what we were all waiting for! What? Pushed back another month. Different trailer on July 14th. Oh crap! Well, my mind was blown and my heart was shattered. But I'm slowly putting the pieces back together so I can make sense of all of this. I want to apologize for not using any footage from the trailer, but, you know. First off, the characters shown in the trailer. We have Lucina, who, if she isn't just an alternate costume for Marth, is more than likely a clone, because it seemed like even her introduction didn't even know what she was. More on that later. We have the return of the face of Smash, which I really thought they would just keep him as an unlockable character, but they did have him playable right away in Melee, so okay, I guess it kind of makes sense. Of course, now that they've finally shown him, it'll be good to finally have everyone shut up about him. Except for how awesome he was in the trailer, that's perfectly fine. I mean, he blocked her sword with his arm and then kicked it away like it was nothing. And he was cell shaded to fit the look of Fire Emblem Awakening, which looked pretty good on him. Then we get to who the real newcomer is, the custom character in Fire Emblem Awakening whose default name is Robin. I have to say, I'm very shocked that the new character wasn't Krom, which kills the Gamatsu leak, while also giving a little more coincidence or evidence to the trophy hint rumor, more on that later. So, Robin, who is either male or female, looks to be one of the most unique Fire Emblem characters we've had, since he, or she, can use tomes to use fire, thunder, wind, and vampire power. I've noticed that each book has a different color, and can only be used a certain amount of times. My little theory is that you can either switch between them with either special or down special, but if not, I'm sure it comes back after he or she has been knocked out. We Dude had brought to my attention that Robin has two different swords. Customizable moves, maybe? Maybe ones for special, ones for regular attacks? There's just not enough evidence, so it's way too early to tell. Same thing with Lucina. I can't tell if she's a clone of Marth or an alternate skin for Marth, just like the Wii Fit trainers, Robin, and most likely Dark Pit. The moves she used heavily point towards clone of Marth. Aerial Neutral A, Aerial Up A, Up B, Side B, and what looks like the neutral B in this screenshot, and what also looks like a down B counter when all the Fire Emblem characters are shown near the end of the video. Unless the rest of her moveset is completely different, she looks to be a straight up clone, which is kind of disappointing to me to be honest, but two clones so far out of 36 confirmed characters, 37 counting Mr. Game & Watch, isn't so bad. But we got Robin, who is a completely different character, so I'm good with that. Also, Krom is not playable, and is only a final smash for Robin. I'm curious if that is also the same for Lucina, because that would make the difference between her being her own slot, but still mostly being a clone, or if she's an alternate skin using Mars Final Smash. So the character wasn't Shulk. As I said, when it comes to trying to predict what new character Sakurai will show, don't. Those who wanted Fire Emblem and got it, don't get too cocky with the next one. Just a little friendly advice. Although I still think that we'll show Shulk before the game comes out if he is in the game, so he might be the last one we see. I know I just said don't try to predict new characters, but something tells me we are going to get another Smash Direct most likely in September, or possibly late August before it comes out in Japan. If that happens, I'm sure we'll get another trailer because we haven't reached the last of them just yet. How many are left is hard to say. It could either be one or two. If one, then just for the possible Direct. If two, then maybe another character in August, and then the possible Direct if it's in September. I'm not saying this will happen just what I think will happen. In fact, we might get a direct in August, and then they'll show us a brand new trailer before the game comes out. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna happen? I've been right, and I've been wrong, so anything goes. But the biggest shocker to me right now isn't the trailer. It's what they showed before the trailer. The pick of the day is a trophy for... Rayman? What? Why would you just get a trophy of Rayman and not put him in the game? You have the model and the blessings from Ubisoft, so why not go the full mile? Even worse is that you show this just before a newcomer is announced! He is truly trying to screw with us! Yes, yes I know, Ubisoft isn't in the character credits either, but that's only for playable characters. And dude had brought up that Camelot wasn't there in the Brawl character credits when they had Isaac as an assist trophy in Brawl, but that kind of proves my point. It's only for playable characters. So Sakurai is either trolling hardcore with this, or third parties can now have trophies without having a playable character. Okay Sakurai, if that's the game you're playing, then do me a favor. Get a trophy of Gino, Snake, Lloyd, Professor Layton for those who want him, 
and most of all, Bomberman, because I'm still holding on to the fact that you at least brought up his crossover game in Brawl, and it almost feels like Konami wouldn't be bothered by it because it feels like they don't even realize that they own him. Just seeing this... Ugh, makes me scream! Please, future DLC! If he's not playable but you have his trophy, then please work with him to get him in later since he's probably not playable, and this will be the only way to change that. And people wonder why I'm supporting DLC for this game. Well, on the subject of trophies... There is the possible trophy quiz hint. For those who don't know about this, the trophy quizzes in the direct may have been hinting at new characters. The trophies were Tiki from Fire Emblem Awakening, Fee from Skyward Sword, Pseudopolitana from KD Cross Uprising, and King K Hunter from Metroid Other M. Many of us think this may have been a possible hint towards new characters, as two of them have been proven correct, Palutena and now Robin. And Lucina, I guess leading many of us to believe that Girahim and even Ridley will be playable characters. I would also like to point out that the King K. Hunter's trophy had Ridley's music playing instead of its own theme. Just something to take notice of. And while I shouldn't take any more guesses on new characters, I still think the new bad guys will be unlockable and we won't see trailers for them. Well, maybe Ridley just to show his role in the game, but that's still kind of a stretch for me. Watch the next trailers for King K. Roll. But there we go. If Shulk is in, I still think they'll show him before the game comes out. Maybe with another veteran like Ness, Mennonite, or even the Ice Climbers if they do return. Robin looks like a great addition and a great way to differentiate himself or herself from the other Fire Emblem characters. The Gamatsu leak is dead, but don't you dare give up on me, Shulk! Captain Falcon looks better than ever. Lucina looks like a clone and is probably the least exciting newcomer for me so far because of that. Rayman's trophy is going to drive me nuts! And finally, I think Ridley's chances have gone up a little because of this. There are going to be so many I told you so's, it's going to get ugly out there. Oh, I just thought of something! I can only be okay with Lucina being a clone if they have a DK character reveal that shows Dixie Kong as a clone of either DK or Diddy or a mixture of the two, and then show King Kurul as his own character! Hey, if this counts as two new Fire Emblem characters, then this should be okay for two new DK characters. Especially since DKC Returns sold about 6 million units on the Wii, and the Kremlins are in Smash Run! Then again, I don't think he'd pull the same trick twice, but here's hoping! Well, I'm glad this video was delayed the following day, as the pick of the day says that Lucina's abilities and Mars are nearly identical, except that she is shorter, and that the biggest difference between them is that her power is not in the tip of her sword like Mars and is equally spread, and that she has her own slot. So, she's a clone and not an alternate costume. Meanwhile, we Fit Trainer, Villagers, Robin, and now most likely Dark Pit are just alternate skins with different voice tracks. That is kind of disappointing, but whatever. Good to know. Time to move on. And what is this? Oh, guys, brace yourselves. The big leak is coming faster than we thought. It appears that the Japanese magazine Koro Koro will show all the fighters and stages in the 3DS version next month, usually around the 15th, but possibly a little earlier. This could be a real game changer here, and it's best to think about all the possibilities that may come from it. I don't know if it means just the starting characters or every single one of them. I can't translate it myself, and I don't understand why Nintendo would allow them to show everyone in the game. I know the Wii U and the 3DS will have the same lineup of fighters, but right now I'm really hoping that some can only be unlocked by having one version or the other. Maybe that's what the covers of both versions mean since they have a few different characters on them. And if they do plan to show the starting lineup, and we are not done with the new trailers just yet, then we might get another video sooner than we expected. The question is, is it just one video or two now? Too many questions float inside my head at the moment. All I can do is wait and hope that it's only the starting characters, as knowing all of the characters before it even comes out in Japan seems a little too soon. It's weird to say that. Once again, this is why I support DLC, to have surprises later on down the road. You know, make characters AFTER the game comes out. Because if this is real, the fun of being surprised is almost over, and the only way not to be spoiled about the list is to get off the internet, and that's just not fun. For those not wanting to be spoiled, I highly admire that and I hope you can make it until October 3rd. Honestly, something feels fishy here. I just can't understand why Nintendo would allow them to show the entire roster before the game comes out. Hopefully it is only for the starting characters, or some have to be unlocked by having the other system, or just something. I mean, it does say it's going to show up for the 3DS characters. It doesn't say the Wii U, even though we know Wii U and 3DS have the same lineup, but like I said, that could be a loophole. As much as I want to know the whole roster, I do want to be surprised later on. 
Come on, free character DLC. You're my only hope right now.